Shalom and welcome to this episode of Ask Aviel. My name is Aviel. It is my pleasure to share with you what I have discovered in my walk so that we can learn and grow together. What is a leader? A leader is a person who leads or commands a group, organization, or country. A leader is someone who inspires passion and motivation in the followers. A leader is someone with a vision and helps others to walk on the path of making that vision a reality. A leader is a role model for others. Israel was very afraid. They could see Pharaoh's armies on one side and the Sea of Reeds on the other. There was no chance for escape. There was no way of running except the way they had come from, and the army of Egypt blocked that path. There were 600 of the finest chariots of Egypt, and also all the other ordinary chariots coming against Israel. Pharaoh had the best military resources. How would Israel make any resistance against war chariots? There was no room left to wander in any direction. But the angel of God went behind the camp of Israel and the pillar of cloud stood behind them. The angel of God stood as a barrier between Israel and the pursuing Egyptian army. The pillar of cloud came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus, it was a cloud and darkness to Egypt, but the pillar of fire gave light by night to Israel. Egypt did not manage to come near Israel at all that night. God protected Israel from the Egyptian attack until they made it through the Sea of Reeds. So Hashem overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Israel walked on dry land and the waters were like congealed walls to them on their right hand and on their left. So Hashem saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. The very next day, Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore, never to rise up against them anymore. This was confirmation to Israel that their deliverance from Egypt was real and complete. They were finally free. God showed Israel that their oppressors were truly dead. Pharaoh and the Egyptians would never trouble Israel again. Korah was a Levite from the tribe of Levi. This was the tribe chosen as God's ministers. The high priest and priestly line was also from the tribe of Levi. Korah was from this family. When Israel was travelling through the wilderness, Korah's family was privileged to carry the veil of the Holy of Holies, the sacred vessels and utensils, the altar of burnt offering, the bronze lever, the altar of incense, the table of showbread, the menorah lampstand, and the Ark of the Covenant. This was not enough honour and privilege for Korah. He wanted more. Korah led a group of 250 leaders to challenge Moses because he appointed Aaron as high priest. Moses rebuked Korah for his rebellion. Moses told the leaders and Korah to show up with fire pans filled with incense and light them before God. Aaron would also do the same and God would choose who he wanted as high priest. Korah's group of leaders did this and the judgment of God burned them up with fire. Datan and Abiram, two brothers from the Reubenite tribe, also rose up before Moses in jealousy at the same time. They also rebelled against Moses' authority over them as God's divinely appointed leader. Datan and Abiram complained about leaving Egypt and grumbled that Israel was now stuck in the wilderness. Indirectly, they despised the promised land as the land flowing with milk and honey. They even said that Moses had brought Israel out of Egypt, the real land that was flowing with milk and honey, to kill them in the wilderness. 
When Moses called for them to negotiate peacefully, they replied, Lo na'ale, we won't go up. Suddenly, the ground split under them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed Korah, Datan and Abiram, along with all their households. All of Korah's people who rebelled and all their possessions went down alive to Sheol, the underworld, they and everything that was theirs. The earth closed over them and they were gone from among the community. They vanished for eternity, swallowed up by the earth. Literally, they went alive into Sheol, under the earth's surface where the dead were buried. They went down alive into the pit. There was no need to dig graves. God sent them straight into the realm of the dead. Just like Korah, Tatan and Abiram, the anti-Messiah and the false prophet will also go into the pit alive. Be careful who we follow. Be very careful about who we call a leader. Some people are in the leadership position, but they are not necessarily good leaders. Look at Pharaoh, look at Korah, Datan and Abiram. For all those who followed their leadership, where did they end up? Pharaoh's best warriors and best chariots of Egypt sank to the bottom of the Red Sea. Korah and his followers were burned up by the fury of God's wrath. Datan and Abiram were swallowed up by the earth. Pharaoh represents an ungodly, satanic, worldly leader. He was full of evil and murderous intent towards the generations of Israel, killing all the male Hebrew babies. Pharaoh wanted to keep Israel as his slaves. He represents someone powerful, deceitful and deceptive. Pharaoh said many times that he would let Israel go and he deliberately changed his mind. He was fierce and cruel. Pharaoh was demonic. He was a slanderer and a destroyer. Korah's actions were more subtle. He was a Levite, the tribe chosen as God's ministers. The high priest and priestly line was from the tribe of Levi. Korah was from this family. Korah's family was privileged to carry the furniture of the tabernacle. So Korah represents someone who perhaps is like a respected spiritual leader, someone who looks like he is close to God. In the end, those who followed Korah got burnt by the fire of God's wrath. Datan and Abiram were Reubenites. Reuben was Jacob's firstborn, his might and the beginning of his strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Datan and Abiram symbolize someone who is successful, talented, gifted, having power and authority. In the end, Datan and Abiram, the two Reubenites, were swallowed up alive into the earth together with their households. Pharaoh's men, Korah's men, and the households of Datan and Abiram suffered much loss, even the loss of their own lives. They did not lead the rebellion, but just blindly followed without any discernment to oppose their leader. But they also met with their own end when the judgment of God came. In these three stories, the leader of Israel was Moses. Numbers 12.3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Moses did not care about being popular. He led by example. He had vision and inspired the people. He was a genuine, sincere person, an authentic person with no pretenses. He was responsible and dependable. He was tenacious and enduring. He made mistakes and he was not perfect, but he always worked on continuous improvement in himself. He had patience, compassion and love for the people. Most important of all, he had a good relationship with God. The truth was that Moses didn't become a leader of Israel by ambition or desire, but by the direct calling of God. Moses had a clear, God-appointed position of leadership, but he was not a proud man who saw himself above the congregation of the Lord. 
our Lord Yeshua was the ultimate leader. He led by example. He said in Matthew 20 verses 26 to 27, Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Mark 9.35 If anyone wants to be first, he must be the last of all and the servant of all. Mark 10.43 Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Luke 22.26 The greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who leads like the one who serves. People do not become leaders because they are great. They become great because they are willing when God calls them to serve as leaders. What is the call to leadership? A leader is the servant of God. He leads the people, but he is not their master. He does not consider himself above the people. Rather, he considers himself equal to the people. He is their advocate, defender and guide. A leader inspires others to be true to God. Leadership is not about popularity, but a leader determines the direction that the people are walking. To be a leader, we do not need a crown or a king's robes of office. All we need to do is to write our chapter in the story, to do deeds that heal some of the pain of this world, and act so that others become a little better for having known us, live so that through us, our ancient covenant with God is renewed in the only way that matters. We are all called to follow the Messiah. He is our leader. We are his followers. But all believers are called to be leaders. We are called to be kings and priests, to lead in our own sphere of influence. We first lead ourselves, motivating ourselves to vision and action. We do not come from nowhere. We come from a long line of great ones as our spiritual ancestors who came before us did. We read about Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Ruth, Hannah, Yehosheva, Yael, Esther, Apostle Paul, John, Peter, Lydia, Priscilla, Titus, Timothy, Phoebe, Chloe. And then we hear the call of Messiah to write the next chapter, our own chapter. Let us continue their journey and not be the broken chain. There will be a hundred generations that will live on through us. There is a book of life. It is the book of the Lamb. Our names and our stories are written in that book. Do not fail the spiritual mission. All of us are part of God's story. We cannot and must not be the missing letter in the scriptures. Being a leader is being given the chance to serve. When we come before God, we must give account of all the wasted opportunities that we are responsible for. The greatest achievement in this life is to serve God and also to help others do the same. Thank you for joining me. I pray that this message inspires and challenges you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.